Hello, and welcome back to This Isn't a Vlog, I promise. I was originally going to put another episode in here, going over the, the footage that I got last year, and kind of a prologue, shall we say. Making a prologue for what currently is happening. Um, but it seemed a bit better to just carry on, otherwise I will lose all memory of everything that I'm doing right now. Because this last five, six days or so has been really full on. I guess the, the last week, really. Um, but a lot of that has been 12 hour days and just just going crazy. Because uh, my van got fixed and we went and got wood. That was pretty uneventful. Even though it was a kind of one, one person at a time situation, we... Uh, we got sorted pretty quickly. Got helped. It's kind of funny, as a as a random aside, it's funny that even though technically the UK runs in the metric system, we're still very imperial, really, because the person serving me didn't know any of the measurements in metric. It was all just the imperial versions, you know, like two by one and all that. But that's just a funny... UK, we're America light type moment. So, the most important bits that I got was a sheet of 12 mil ply to cut into strips. I got them to cut it into six 110 millimeter strips because that was the number of like beam things that I've got on the roof. And having it cut into strips by then would make the next bit a lot easier which was basically just measuring the length of them and cutting them down to size. That bit was pretty straightforward. Uh, I got I got that sorted quite easily. That, uh, I'm happy to say that I can successfully cut strips of plywood into specific lengths. The lengths didn't have to be that specific, but, you know, I, I did it. It worked. It was fine. It was good. Before I could get those up and attached though I needed to stuff a bunch of soft insulation into those struts that I was attaching to so that I didn't make the same mistake I made with the walls. See I am I'm 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 getting better at this. I, I'm I'm doing better. So this was a bit tedious because a lot of the holes were really tiny. But I got some help from my mum. So it was it was a lot less tedious thanks to that. And it didn't actually take that long even though the holes are really small. Uh my mum did come up with the idea of stuffing these little bits of polystyrene packaging in there instead of the soft insulation that I've got, but it wasn't really a very good idea because once compressed they didn't really regain their shape again, so it was kind of just pointless. So we just used the soft stuff, which is designed for this exact purpose, and it, it worked pretty well, honestly. Um, it, was, it was pretty straightforward. Of course, just to demonstrate how nothing is really the same in a van. Plywood strips. Only the rear three were actually the same length, like the struts were very slightly different lengths than the front three. And actually, I hadn't realised until I fixed them, but one, just one of the struts is actually wider than 110 millimetres. It's like 113 or something like that. No, it's like 130, I'm thinking centimetres. Um, so that sort of threw me off a little bit, but it just, fan, fans are crazy. It, you can't you can't assume that anything is symmetrical with anything else. Everything is different. Everything must be measured. And of course, because we're new, we're going to be measuring it three times and cutting it one and a half times. That that's very important. You you've got to scale ratios, ratios, guys, ratios. Now the plan for fixing the ply in place was to use some adhesive. I got this stuff called. Sudol Fix All Turbo, uh, which was recommended by the website I got it from, Glues Direct, whose website looks like it was built in maybe 2004 and has never been updated since. This these, this seems good. It's for fixing most things to most other things in a very strong fashion. Uh, and I got some self-tapping screws to essentially fix it in place so the glue could do its work. Uh, as it turns out, though, it's, it, there's definitely a bit of a knack to using the self-tapping screws. The first time I tried to put one in, it honestly felt like it was going to be impossible. It was just 
not going in at all. I had to fight with it so much. And I do actually have a reasonable amount of footage of me fighting with it till I kind of figured out what the knack was. Uh, what I ended up doing was placing the board on the strut, marking out where all the holes were going to be, then taking it down, drilling a pilot hole for all those holes because it was the screws really do not want to go through the wood straight they just want to wobble around like crazy i don't like they just have a mind of their own in that department so pilot holes pretty important then put it up there get the first screw in because <clears throat> that's always the hardest one the other two kind of go in much easier because there's a bit of extra support sort of pulling it up <clears throat> so get the first one in which might take a few attempts. I found that the technique that seemed to work for me was first time push down on the wood and like split your force between uh, pushing on the wood, touching the strut and pushing on the, the drill. And what will hopefully happen with that, pushing with a lot of force, is you'll get like an indent in the metal. Like it won't go all the way through or it might, it might, might just pierce through, but you'll get sort of like a, a pilot hole almost, but drilled by the screw and then bring it all the way back out again and use your full force this time just on the drill just push the drill as hard as possible just just really go go at it whilst you're obviously uh pulling the trigger and screwing them screws and that that usually works like in a couple of tries that tended to to get it in i even managed to get some of them in first try i think uh, after initially thinking it was going to be impossible. So, you know, just like everything else, don't believe that it's going to be as easy as the people on the professional videos show it to be. I, I basically, th this whole bit is lifted from a video by the Restoration Couple, which is a really, really helpful video. Re these, uh, they have a really good series on the build of their van goes into a lot of detail, shows you how it does a lot of stuff, and you know he actually knows what he's doing. So if you want, you know, actual solid professional style advice, that would be the place to go. I will link that that video in the description because I basically lifted these struts directly from their video, and they're just they're a great series of videos, really helpful. So yes, once I'd got the first screw in, I would then take it out, and that's when I'd apply the adhesive, just little blobs going along the whole thing. I don't really know how much you're supposed to use. I think, uh, oh yeah. So this is what it looks like. And it, it all it says is apply fix all turbo in beads or dots onto the material which needs to be bonded. Press the material strongly onto the substrate and leave to set. It doesn't really tell you that much. Like beads or dots. Beads or dots kind of implies that it's not that big, like a dot sounds like a small amount. And I think it's pretty strong stuff. Well, I, I'm I'm very confident it's pretty strong stuff. So I, I didn't use a huge amount. I probably didn't use quite enough on the first one. But then after that, it was it was pretty sorted. And I still have loads left actually from doing all of those six and a couple of other bits. I think I've still got like three quarters of a tube left. And I bought four tubes just because shipping costs were kind of the same price as a tube. So might as well buy a few of them since it seemed pretty versatile. Um, yeah, so apply the polymer, polymer, <laughs> I don't know why I call it polymer, like it is a polymer, but apply the adhesive and, <laughs> um, go stick it back on the strut. Uh, obviously put the first, put the middle one in first, cause you've already done that. It should be pretty easy to get it back in the hole that you've already, uh, drilled through. And then you just do the, do the other two, like slide it around, get it in place and then stick the other two in. And that worked pretty well. I just repeated that for the rest of them up until the very last one, which uh, you can't really do because you can't get a drill underneath the sort of the storage shelf that goes above the cab it has like a big plastic lip on it. And you, you just can't get a drill in there. And I think even if you could, you wouldn't really be able to get enough of your force behind it because you're not directly underneath it. So there, I just did again exactly what the restoration couple Tim recommended and just wedged a bunch of stuff. I used offcuts. I used, I used chemistry textbooks from the university degree that I started and quit after like five weeks. That's the first time they've ever come in useful for anything. So, you know, kind of please like, you know, a hundred pounds well spent, 
Ja. <sighs> so refreshing. Now the, the insulation came next. And that was relatively straightforward. Measure the gaps you've got between your ply beams and account for the fact that you probably haven't done them straight because I didn't do them straight. Uh, and go and chop it up. I used a bread knife because that was a way that was recommended and, and uh, to, on a forum somewhere, I think. And it does work pretty well. You can also use like a regular handsaw or you probably can use a jigsaw or stuff, but a, a bread knife makes surprisingly little mess and is pretty effective. So I do kind of recommend it. The worst thing about that sort of Kingspan or Salatex or that sort of polystyrene foam type insulation it is just the amount of mess that goes everywhere and my inner environmentalist hates the fact that these little particulates are just kind of floating off into the local environment and there isn't really anything you can do about it because I don't have enough room anywhere in the house to cut it inside so it has to be cut outside and you, know, you can put dust sheet stuff and stuff like that down to catch the debris but you won't catch all of it There's, it's physically impossible the wind will just come along and take it it's so light it basically you'll just leave and it just gets everywhere it is everywhere right now but that's you know that's just what you get i suppose so you basically just cut the thing and then you, know, you cut it a bit wider because you're going to try and fiction friction fiction fiction fit it. <laughs> it's fictional the fit is entirely fictional uh, no, you're friction fitting it. So, you know, I would cut it a bit wide, partially deliberately, partially accidentally, because I just can't cut it in a straight line to save my life. And, you know, you go inside, try and fit it, figure out where it needs to come off and just, just shave it. Just keep shaving it. <laughs> shave, shave, shave until eventually it fits in. And hopefully you haven't broken it that much. And you just do that till you've filled in all the blanks. The hardest bits are kind of the, the corners and the bits around the fan and the roof light, just because you're dealing with like the corner of the van and you don't have as much stuff to grip to. Oh yeah, uh, the rear, because there isn't a strut, but I still wanted kind of something to screw to and something to hold the insulation in. I did put a small piece of ply sort of vertically just on the back and just used that the same technique, basically a bit of glue and, and the self-tapping screws. And that mostly worked to hold the insulation in. There was one piece that I couldn't get to stick at that point, uh, but everything else I managed to friction into place and yeah, it worked pretty well. So yeah, next thing I needed to build a frame for my fan because at the moment, it, or you know, at that point it had been just drilled into the roof, just screwed into the roof uh, because there was no ceiling to to screw into at that point just the metal which has been fine like it's held and there's been no problems with it uh but to and you could theoretically leave it like that and just sort of run a load of cladding around it and then it's got a, f a sort of um frame plastic cover thing that that goes on top to kind of cover everything up make it look all neat you could just screw that into the cladding i'm pretty sure but by having a frame, it gave me something to wedge the insulation into, which kind of enabled me to build everything better. So I built the frame. Didn't It wasn't too hard. It was a lot easier than building the, the equivalent frame for the roof light because it was just even. It was just basically like a 50 by 50 centimeter square frame that I built out of wood that I had, like bits of batten. And yeah, it was all right. It definitely wasn't perfect. I was kind of vaguely happy with it because I don't feel like my woodworking skills are very good so I, I feel like I'm getting better which is nice but it did the job uh, we screwed it in I didn't realize that the fan could actually be removed by taking the screws at the side off and lifting it up because I didn't install it I got it professionally installed so I managed to mm, totally ruin the thread on one of the screws, maybe two of the screws at the back, but one of them's just totally ruined. So when I screwed it back in to the frame, uh, it didn't go all the way in, and it it just got to the point where the it's just gone. So I hope that it's not going to leak. I I'd put a lot more butyl tape in and around the screws when putting them back in because that's what they were sealed with originally. That's what the whole thing is sealed with. Uh, so I think it's I think it's okay. I, I have now done some testing and it seems to be holding up fine. Like there's no sign of any water coming through, and because it's covered by the back of the fan, like it's very unlikely to really get serious amounts of water on it. So I think it's okay, but a little bit a little bit nerve wracking. And it means if I ever do need to take it off for whatever reason, I'm gonna need to like drill this screw out. I guess. Um, 
I don't really know anything about that though. That's a problem for future me, but hopefully not even future me. Hopefully future somebody else. It, it's really good when your problems can be diverted to future somebody else. Whew. So that that's basically the the framing and the insulation for the ceiling. I think it's probably the bit that's gone the most smoothly of anything so far in the build. And it was actually quite enjoyable because I could just get on with it. And I, I quite enjoy working on the van when I can just get on with it at my own pace, turn the tunes on, I know what I'm doing, I'm just I'm just working through a process. You know, obviously I'm figuring things out a little bit as I go, but it's it's nice. It's I like I like that. And you can obviously see see the progress happening in front of your eyes. So it was good. Um next time I'll be talking about the wiring and the conduit and moving on to like fix the, the ceiling panels in place because that was quite challenging and required a, 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 yeah, a bit of a learning curve about pulling cable but we'll, we'll save that for next time um, see you later taters I did carry on at university I just switched to computer science which was a much better choice for me and what I should have been doing from the beginning but ironically I wouldn't have even gone into the computer science course with the A levels that I did because I just did science and I had no no formal computing competition com no formal computing qualifications um, but saying that I did better than the majority of my year because I was actually passionate about it so just you know study what you're passionate about there's there's no point there's no point studying stuff you're not passionate about uh, and preferably something that's going to get you a job because like, it's a lot of time to waste if you're just doing it for the lols. Then again, who the hell knows what they want to do at like 18, 19. I don't know, do what you want. Don't worry about the debt, it's meaningless. In the UK, if you're in America, then you're screwed, sorry. But, you know, you're screwed in a lot of ways over there, let's face it, guys. Come on, sort your health care out.